Alrighty, we're going to be landing in Kona soon. We kind of fell in love with the area. We were living on Maui and Maui's just so expensive. And we were like, well, maybe we could get something here. Wow, look at that. Wow, oh look, you can see the little volcanoes that's, down there. The that's little, a river. whatever they are. That's a river, guys. This is the river of lava. Right when there was an eruption going, I was like, maybe it's a good time to look. And we started looking and we found, you know what, we could actually buy something here for cash and own it outright. There she is. Thank God. <gasps> Thanks for coming out. We went right by it again. <laughs> wow, you're hidden back here. And then it, this uh, actually backs up against the natural, for the forest reserve. So there's, li there's nothing back there. It's literally the end of the road. <laughs> yeah. You guys, how did you find this? You know, um, we were coaching track and field and we came out here as coaches. When we were looking, we were really fortunate because most people, when they buy land here, it's just, there's no driveway. Completely raw, just like you're seeing over here. Like yeah. just completely filled with trees. And some people will cut in by hand. And then in, in addition, there's no water systems here. So everybody catches their own water. Everybody. everybody. Interesting. Yeah. And everybody, we're talking about a pretty big area here. Yeah. 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 And even if you are on grid, you're still catching water. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Are most people off grid around here? Yep. Yeah. So you see a lot of alternative lifestyles. Our neighbors live in uh, tents. Yeah. The whole family. There used to be a home here. And in, I think, 99, it burnt down. So when we first came here, there was just a pathway and the driveway wasn't cleared, but we walked down here and we saw the opening and we're like, hey, you know what? This is something we could, I think, work with, you know? So it's affordable here? Extremely. It's extremely affordable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some of these lots are valued, like it's been going up, but almost like 17,000 for three acres. So you decided just to build your own house. Yeah, we kind of did the cost and said, why not? Was there a reason why you made a Pentagon? What is this? <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of really liked the idea of not living in a box and the, the different feeling of space that it, it, it gave, not having those right angles. So you used some just raw beams? But... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those are ohias that I found here. So, you know, they're, um, they're pretty sturdy. A lot of the... Which the, ohia? Which, which type did you mention? These are these before? giant ones. The big ones. Yeah. yeah, with the red. Yeah, so these, are, but, so these were fell already. And then we just, just like the gate. And so then we just decided to, we just um, <clears throat> sanded them down and... It's a super hard wood. Because we'd seen other people had this on their porches and we were just like, that looks so nice. What was yeah. the name of the car again? That's Ash. Ash. So she, yeah, she's named after the eruption. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's great. Oh, that's so fun. It's our outdoor kitchen. Your burner is just really simple. Yeah, we have a single burner. It's just a camping. We switch it from this propane tank for our soups or pastas and our oatmeal, and then grilling everything else on this, so. So you have your pots hanging here. Yeah. yeah. Like you're embracing the idea that this is an outdoor kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. You gotta just yeah. go with it. <laughs> Which was, I, I kind of had to sell it to Christine at first, like, we're gonna have an outdoor shower in a kitchen. And it was like, I'm like, it's cold. <laughs> like, I, a lot of this was hard to swallow and, and understand that it would actually happen, but it, it just kept on happening and happening. Then our outdoor shower, there's a um, solar panel up there on the top. It's just 200 watts. We don't run off much power here at all. We only run off a one kilowatt battery. So we're running off of 200 watts here right now and one kilowatt for our pumps and everything. <laughs> yeah, so, so the solar is the shower roof. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is just kind of a fun, you know, it's got... <laughs> you can just get a standard shower. Yeah. Yep. 
And the piping's super easy. It's this plastic. They, they just have these little crimps and they're, they're really easy. They're just a tool. It's like a little puzzle, you know? Yeah, they, they... The joints are beautiful. Those uh, ropes. Oh, it's kind of worn. It is a mariner rope that I had painted with some epoxy, I think. Because uh, there's the cube. This is the source of water for the toilet and for the sink. And so we're, that's just catching right fun here. with our funny little yeah. <laughs> pipe. Living here, all of a sudden you become aware of your water use. You know, this is just simply like a outdoor shower made to be used like for like a pool or something. I looked at the capacity and the efficiency. It was everything we needed, you know? Yeah. And it's just on demand. So it just heats what we need. So we don't have a big tank. Yeah. This is enough water. Is this, yeah. this the only one you have? Yeah. Although yeah. we're contemplating getting one more. Not quite enough. It usually is. But every once in a while, it does get down to where you're like down here, maybe. <laughs> And you're gonna have to go and get your gallons and fill it up and then fill, fill your tank. I had an uncle who was an artist and he lived off grid here for like almost 40 years of his life. So he was kind of an inspiration of a, it was possible to do. So he was always a, kind of like a mythical person as far as this guy who lived out in the woods off grid and just did artwork, but he brought us here. Is that your art? Yeah, some of it's, this is a recreation, but most of it's my art. This is one of my first But that's people. one of Matt's yeah. originals. And then some, that's my uncle who's passed away, but he is the one who lived here. Yeah. And, the, and this is kind of a kitchen, the indoor portion. I built this with wood that I found. Again, the ohia, the fell ohia yeah. to give it that flair. And this is even acacia, okay. Okay. acacia. And this is yeah. the end of it that I had to cut oh, off. Nice. Because it didn't quite fit. <laughs> but then it became shelves, too. You have water pressure because you're using a pump? Yeah. Is that correct? Actually, you can see how, yeah, it's, you'll hear it when it... I see it's a pump, 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 pump. Yeah. But, but there is some pressure there. Yeah. yeah. Great you know, it's, it's not RV type of pressure, it's yeah. real pressure. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I can change the piping to get more pressure, but for our water use now. But yeah, there's just a little, what, a 120 volt thing that's plugged into this that's running the pump. <laughs> that's, what that's our whole power. The solar panel is connected to that. Yeah. And that gives us the wattage for all of our lighting and USB, you know, okay. whatever it is. So how did you decide what you wanted inside and what you wanted outside? So you have a sink inside, but you could have put a burner here. Yeah, we we're thinking of burner, but I like the, the wood exposed and yeah. like just open space. And so you see outside you have the burner. Yeah, you can say what's for dinner? But every day you're outside, no matter if it's raining or if it gets yeah, cold yeah. or... Yeah. So coffee in the morning and then some... What are the extremes here in temperature? Yeah, we'll get in the 40s, high okay. 40s. And you're still outside cooking when that happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You put on I mean, some layers. Yeah, like I definitely have like my down jacket and my boots. Because <laughs> the, if there's little wind, it'll feel even colder. So you don't need any air conditioning or heating. We have a fan, the small little fan here that we use. Oh. And that's about enough. The trade winds come like this way, mm -hmm. so I kind of position the window so that there's at least some circulation exactly. with the trade winds. So, okay. and then we will eventually probably put little, just a little bit of ventilation yeah. on the top. We're still finishing the roof on the outside. Yeah, I have a solar, I have a solar fan that would help with humidity. But it still gets kind of cold. You don't ever need heat. No, I mean, we, luckily my parents have given us a nice down comforter, <laughs> and so we got the down. And we got the flannel. <laughs> no, and it's, it's, it's one of those oh, things where great, great. Uh, in the winter, you know, you close, Layers. it'll heat yeah. up and we'll, we'll close the windows early and it'll, it'll keep some of the heat in. Your floors look really old. We lived in a 1930s farmhouse that had like these old 12 inch planks. So, so yeah. yeah, a lot of this is actually just done through staining and color matching that I did just with um, an oil stain before I finished it. So I give it multiple coats to give it that kind of reddish pecan, like uh, the richer color. But I think originally it is like this color. So that's like the un unstained yeah. color. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to give it an old worn look. I thought you'd gotten a recycled <laughs> look. That's what I want. <laughs> Matt painted this and that's Pele. So Pele is the goddess of fire. Yeah, so oh. she makes the land. Yeah, she, she's the one that spouts out. And sometimes the she's asleep. I'll show you a great piece that my uncle did. My uncle did this piece. Mm -hmm. And it's of Pele sleeping. Oh, yeah. so we bought this one before he passed away. 
this mandala is, is mine. And it's kind of the inspiration for even some of the house of the getting away from uh -huh. the right angles and... Yeah, because if you look at, even look at what they call the tresses. Yeah, I can almost see that in this art. We had originally thought of actually having like a, having a space up there and having like a ladder up there, but it's so much cooler to have it open. <laughs> like it looks really great yeah. to have it open. Yeah. yeah. So you decided to make it almost just like one big room, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, because there's no, it feels open. Yeah. And this is permanently open. Yeah. 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 Originally, we weren't going to have this wall, but I was like, we have too much art at my parents' house in Kula. I was like, we have to have walls for art. <laughs> but it does, it's nice to have the wall. I think it makes it feel like you have sort of a bed space, a bedroom yeah. space, and then you feel like living room. Yeah. Like it really does feel like two yeah. different yeah. spaces. Yeah. And then we were able to add on this little, the toilet actually. Yeah. So literally just the toilet. Add on? It's sort of like this square that we didn't know how it was going to be. Yeah connected to the shape small <laughs> utility of a pod of but we kind of wanted to do the bar the whole barn door situation that's a beautiful door did you make the door yeah yeah we bought the track and then i just bought the wood and stained it and this i had bought at a garage sale yeah we found these oh, wow. <laughs> and then you have a closet yeah our little the, mini the walk-in walk -in closet yeah space for one <laughs> But we have Matt's, uh, all of his wares over here. And then this is my little side here. Then we got our drawers. And then this is actually an inverter and a battery that's set up to uh, charge the Tesla. And all the windows, we, Matt was really insistent on like just wanting to have it open, like really open, open. And it really does, I mean, <laughs> the trees surround us. Yeah, we're just surrounded by all these greens, you know, in the, the jungle and... You know, you can hear someone coming down the driveway. So it's like, you know, it's a great place to work. It's a great place to do art, great place to... just to be. You lived in an RV for a little while? For yeah, for two years? a year and a half, almost two years, in a twenty-four foot RV. So it's like a fifth wheel. Pretty compact space. Most of the bathroom is painted. Shower. See today, we taking out this toilet and putting in a composting toilet. Toilets out. We looked into like, how are we going to use like, the toilet? Ultimately, we decided to do a compost toilet. Yeah. And that was a really great investment. And it was, um, you get in touch with yourself. So the RV was how you decided to live on the land while you were building. Yeah. Temporary water catchment. There's a pump. Build RV. Hot water, hot water. Feel it. The Christmas miracle. Twenty tons of gravel, and uh, I think I moved about two thirds of it. Well, after two and a half days of moving gravel, this is what the top of the driveway looks like. So you started by—I mean, you don't even really have a foundation, right? You didn't no. put a whole concrete slab out or anything no, like that. No, I mean, no, that was one of the plans. But I actually we rented a jackhammer and I leveled out some of the rock, and there was a decent amount of rock under this, and then we brought in gravel and then we compacted the gravel and then you know i got a laser and leveled everything and <laughs> is that a pretty easy foundation i mean is this something that so it's all like what what is it called tofu blocks i think they weigh about 60 pounds and how many we have like maybe 18 and it's all just in this hexagon form yeah. we plotted it out we and definitely had to follow a lot of guidelines I read a whole book on structural, you know, from the University of Hawaii about earthquakes. earthquakes because we get them often here, very often, depending on how active it is. But we've experienced, what, a 6.0 here. Yeah. And so what, you can actually self-engineer a seismically safe home? Well, there's straps that they use in like Louisiana and everything. There's basically like a, a, a grade of deal which you bind everything with that gives you more than just the nails. 
They're called hurricane ties. That was something that we used throughout because, you know, not only is there seismic, but there's also hurricanes. Did you have any building experience? Uh, no, no. None, none, none whatsoever. You know, I, I cons my brother-in-law is an architect. He's pretty helpful as far as giving feedback and some of the ideas that we were sharing. Some of our neighbors helped, but we paid them in what, beer and pizza? But um, no, none at all. So did you need to have a structural engineer? I mean, what are the requirements for permitting and for all that around here? A lot of people are unpermitted here. So, you know, this is uninsured, unpermitted. Here, it's a little place where people kind of let be and nobody kind of gives you uh, much trouble for what you're doing, you know? Do you think your connection to endurance sports or to other sorts of sports also helped for building? Yeah. I was very intense in distance running. I was running, you know, 110 miles a week up at elevation doubles. And I really focus that sort of uh, the determination, the, you know, just long hours, the, the, the little pay, you know, kind of giving up that it's more, you know, you're not going to get paid for most of the work you do. Matt just has that discipline and that work ethic that he's just always trying to move forward and drive forward and learn something new. And so that definitely no doubt helped with building and making this a reality, you know, making the whole thing a reality. Cause he'll, he'll like convince you that it's like, that's just how you have to be. And yeah, why wait? Why, you know, why, why stop? <laughs> like, and you get inspired by, I think people around here too. You see people, there's a lot of that, like I can do it attitude. And we, just, we would just save up money and then just go to Home Depot and have them deliver all the wood. So no, we, we were able to pay outright. And so no, you know, no mortgage, yeah. no, no electricity bills. No bank. No bank. We did it without the bank, which was yeah. one of the Cash. plans that we actually, as, as impossible as it seemed. Total, if you can, you want to close the cost. I mean, property was 22, yeah. 22K. For the property and, uh, in 2019. And then I would say the house probably was around 40, maybe, maybe a little under, you know? So for 60,000, you have this property or this house, I bought We're like, well, if we can't afford it, let's not buy it, you know? But the, I mean, that's what brought us here is like, we could buy it and it was affordable. So how frugal do you think your life is? Are you missing something? Or you think you can't even go like more minimalistic? You think this is a nice setup? Uh... So far I think it is. I, I really hope that we do have a lot of solar panels still that we want to use for a little bit more electricity in here because it is limited for sure. Like we don't have a fridge. We have an ice box. Wait, you have an ice box? What we just have a, not it's like not, it's empty right now. We actually don't even have it set up right now. We don't now. have any refrigeration right now. Not right now. Oh, yeah. But we, we will buy stuff with okay. blocks of ice. And then for like three or four days, we'll have. So you don't have any vegetables? We have bananas. One of the first things we did was put in fruit trees. Look, this is our prize lemon, our, one of our first lemons. That's a generous <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and now we're trying to get more self-sustaining, you know? So this is the garden out starting here? Okay. It's kind of like everywhere, yeah. Like there's some basil already going here on yeah. the right. Our lemon tree. Lemon. You don't even notice like a demarcation of garden versus... No, we kind of just made right? it like a little bit of... Yeah, that's the pink lemon, the Eureka lemon. And almost everything here besides the fruit trees are like clones. So many of these plants, you can actually just put them in the ground and they'll grow. That's basil. Some bananas we just picked. And this is called the finger banana. It's like the size of a finger. Little mini banana. Yeah, it's sweet. It's like an apple banana. You have a banana tree? All these green leaf ones are banana trees. So that's only been four years and you already have what looked like trees. <laughs> yeah, this is spinach right here. That's a spinach, spinach tree. tree. It's Samoan spinach. We just find all these crazy, we're just like, let's do it. Whatever there is, we're yeah, like. Stuff I had never heard of. We put it into burritos, we have it with salad. 
Really and different. so even this all cut and I have clones of it growing everywhere. So it's like we came from a place on Maui where we had to water every day almost. Yeah. And so here it's like, you don't water. no, it's like a gardening paradise. Like you just, you just cut and trim. You just have to trim. I don't know, I've, I've lost count of some of the trees I've put in. This is a Jamaican cherry. Yeah. It's supposed to taste like cotton candy. So you just saw this, read about it or something, and you're like, that sounds good. Yeah, you know, here on the Big Island, you have so many people who are, gro who are growing so many different types of things because you can grow so many things here that, like, the diversity of things is just, I, yeah, things I've never heard of. This is a mountain apple right here. This is a Hawaiian chili pepper. This here is a pomelo tree. It's like a cross between like a lemon and a grapefruit. And here's a lemon that where that gigantic lemon came from. It's amazing that this tree is as young as it is. That's sugarcane. And my friend came over like a year ago and he gave me a cutting. And I was like, if you put this in the ground, it will grow. And now it's like, I'd, I don't know. Like it's gone completely. <clears throat> So we're thinking about getting a... a so it's a... it literally grew from here and now it's just these huge stalks of sugarcane. Yeah. Wow. So we might get like a, a press, a hand press and extract the sugar. I mean, you can cut it and it's like, it's just raw sugar. You can do it yourself. Yep. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. So you could be quite self-sufficient if you're, oh. you're getting your su uh, sweetener. <laughs> hoping, hoping. And then we have tea. This is a cacao tree. So this is a cocoa tree that's kind of struggling, but it turns into <laughs> chocolate, basically. Well, this is tea. It's like black tea. Yep. Right. This is lemongrass. So that's good to put in your rice. Oh, here, this is a... Oh yeah, pineapple mint. This is pineapple mint. There's a coffee plant. So your idea is to maybe make your own coffee or just plant yeah. it? Yeah. No, oh, really? Yeah, I might try yeah. it out. There's another, another Hawaiian chili pepper. And then again, you're amongst all these banana trees. I think they're all different, these banana trees. So like There's apple, like banana, three or four different like types. Different types. Amazing. I mean, amazing. You really, it's a paradise for gardeners. <laughs> But that you can just grow. I mean, it's it's everybody's dream to sort of grow your own food, right? But yeah. it's so difficult for a lot of people oh, right. because you have to make sure you water. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, that was our problem in Kula. We had a little garden and we'd have to leave the water on all day. I think that's a grapefruit. Is that one grapefruit? Yeah, grapefruit. That's grapefruit there, yeah. yeah. I kind of tame them. I try to bonsai them to give them shape and stuff. And this is lime. You can see all the little lime flowers. A Tahitian line. So no wonder you don't have a refrigerator. You just come out here and pick. Yeah. Pick kind of figure it out. Greens, yeah. Right. So you can have salads when you want. You don't need oh, a yeah. refrigerator. Yeah. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. And as we build, we just spread trees. This is a sugar cane, like a purple sugar cane, right here. Like he's saying, you can literally just put it in the ground and it goes nuts. So this is sort of our lava feature. It's like a crack. So you, this is lava? You see lava here? It doesn't look like it. There's so much dirt on top. Yeah, this is, this is lava. It's because this eruption's 500 years old. Huh. So it's all been like the next cycle, right? Like yeah, dirt's I coming know. over it. It's, nothing's yeah. really permanent here. Like there's so much turnover in a rainforest. That's oh. true. And That's if you don't really take true. care of it, it's like, it'll just take over. Yeah, you kind of embrace like living in the forest. I don't know if I'm a religious person, maybe a spiritual person, but I know you sleep deeper here, you know, the, the dreams you have, the, maybe it's the pace of life as well as just being surrounded by all the trees that it's, there's a comfort and a simplicity and a beauty to it that we like. Yeah, well, you know, I didn't, never imagined we'd be here, but now that we are, it's like, where else would we want to be, you know? I tell Matt's dad, I say, this is the dream that I never had. <laughs> <laughs>